Hey guys, this is Production Music Live with another tutorial. Today we are going to take a look at this type of style here. But it's kind of difficult to properly describe this kind of style, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start walking through ways of producing this type of music. And um, well, let's take a closer look at the drums. All our drums are inside of this big drums group here because um, there's a lot going on. And next to all that, we have a couple of vocal samples playing. So mostly reversed vocal samples here, like that one. And you see they're a bit processed as well. Everything is Ableton only processed here. The only external plugin we are using is Massive. And um, well, we have three more of those vocals here, or four actually. And below that we have um, we have a bass sound, a long one, like this. And we have um, a choir type sound. And um, well, plucks is actually not correct. It's more like a melody kind of leady pattern. And then we have this little tonal effect down here that just comes and goes on one note. These are the instruments playing along, if you're wondering, and we are going to take a closer look at them later, but let's start with the drums. And as always, we are playing a sidechain and we are muting it. So it's just a kick sound inside of a simpler device I actually made this um, originally in Ableton 9.2, so occasionally you will see this upgrade button here. It's just um, it's been made in an older version, and you can upgrade it into your new version. Like this is, I think, Ableton 9.7 here, and it's not going to sound any different. So um, dragging out this side chain here, our second element is a, a kick, um, a kick sound, and I'm just going to play that one here. Almost all of these sounds I'm using in here are taken out of our D Premium Volume 2 drum sample pack. And I actually also put a couple of those loop drum groups in there and there's a lot going on. So this is kick sample Deep 30, like, um, well, it's probably this one. Yeah. And we're using that one, a bit of EQ, but that's actually almost nothing. The fancy part comes inside of this drum group here. So we are starting with a, with a shaker up here. So we have this shaker sample. And if I'm dragging that over here and we take a look at the MIDI pattern. That's quite interesting. Maybe it's not the usual way to do it, but... Um, so these are grayed out. I'm not using those. I was playing around with them initially and then I ended up not using them. And of course our kick is playing typical four to the floor pattern here. And if we go down to the shaker, that one has a couple of effects behind it. And you see EQ8 takes off uh, lower frequencies here. So I'm taking off the delays and the compression and um, actually right clicking here you can switch quickly to those later parts and also this EQ8 and sustain. So it bites a bit more without the EQ. So it has a very full sound. I was not looking for that. I was just looking for the higher parts here. So EQ, a bit of delay to make it more groovy. Then we are catching delays directly on our kicks with the sidechain compressor here, taking the audio from the sidechain. And then we are adding a bit of sustain with a glue compressor here. Um, this guy, I think the preset is just add sustain. And then I'm taking a bit of resonance off. If 
we put it into the pre-listening mode, this is biting a bit too much. But as I'm talking about it, I'm also noticing, uh, let's go to our master channel and we should actually take our mastering chain off for now. So this is um, a little bit of a mastering chain here with a bit of compression. We'll talk about that later. And there's also a video on our YouTube channel covering that specific chain here. So I'm just putting in a, um, a, a limiter. Maybe I'm not even going to use that one. Well, let's take that off. And we're just going to throw on another instance of the utility behind here, not to mess up things. I'm just going 10 up. Leaving headroom here. So, so now we can hear the actual sounds without having to fear that it's being processed in our mastering chain later. Um, also, there's another shaker playing along here. And that one is, um, what is it doing? Just playing offbeat. So um, without any effects applied again, I take these off. It's a bit loud also, but um, now we know why we need a high cut here. Sidechain, just in case, not really needed on that one. And um, again, cutting uh, some resonances here around uh, 4.5K. Yeah, those sound a bit nasty. And also with our next uh, hi-hat thing here, we are going to insert some information in this part. So I don't want to mess too much with those frequencies. That's why I'm already mixing them off a little bit here in this stage. So let's play together with the kick and the shaker and the other shaker. Pretty cool pattern already. And now the next thing we are adding in is this hi-hat here to support the offbeat. It's also playing the offbeat and um, solo just a bit more metallic it has those resonances up here so if we put it together it emphasizes on the on the offbeat here Okay, if we go on, now stuff is getting a bit more interesting. We have those toms here. And um, I was listening to this remix by Siriosmo for a moderate eating hooks. And he has those nice deep kicks or something what's going on. And I was trying to replicate this type of sound. And um, let's see in solo. So the way I started doing this was um, I started with a tom sound and if we actually uh, quickly go into the controls we can see we are pitched down 14 semitones from the original sample so that's totally different already and um, then we are carving out those frequencies down here and uh, well that's basically all we are also putting a sidechain on it because it's at the kick position and we want the kick to cut through and then this thing to be part of the sound as well. So if I play this together with the kick now and actually we are clipping on the master so I'm going to take this utility down. So with the original sample, this would sound like more or less like this. I'm taking off the EQ and I'm taking the transposition to zero. <laughs> Crazy, the difference. But we have a bit of this um, 
snappiness inside of the sound here. And if you pitch it down, you can imagine the sample getting longer, but maintaining a bit of the snappiness. That, so that's why I tried to go for it. And I'm going to undo my last step. So um, transpose goes back to 14 and EQ back on. And now we are here. If we go up in the transposition, So this is how we can get this first um, very low sounding bass tom kind of sound or it also could sound like a bass drum, an actual bass drum on a drum kit that's not really well adjusted. Okay, so we have another one here. What is that one doing? It's, it's the same source. Uh, but in this case the attack is a little bit different and I think the transposition is even lower and we're just playing those positions. And if we put it together... This is not enough, so I'm taking the next element in here as well. Okay, so um, this is a percussive kind of sound and um, that one is also transposed heavily. So going up. <laughs> so this is what we started with and if I'm taking the EQ off, All right, and um, let's go back to where we are right now. You can see we are adding in all those little elements here and they're kind of asking and responding to each other. And also notice every once in a while I'm using the track delay function here to adjust MIDI. So sometimes the groove isn't correct when it's really on point here. So in that case you can move around your MIDI or you can just delay your track by uh, milliseconds or you can also put it into samples. But um, that's always a handy way of just trying out things without having to mess around with MIDI too much. Okay, so the next element here is uh, this thing. It's playing the same positions. Not sure if that's really needed, it's in here. That's basically doing the same thing again and um, might as well leave it off. Maybe I was just trying to uh, replicate something here. Let's take, a, what is this, closed hi-hat down here. So in this copy here I've just the actual sample from the drum pack. So you can just use that one. We have a lot of those sounds now inside of the drum pack here actually. We have those percussions for example. Here. So a lot of those sounds you can use for those types of grooves here. So we have um, this closed hi-hat here on this track and that one is just um, a usual hi-hat pattern. We've quickly folded, we can see that. Um, just clears up the hi-hats a bit more to stand out. Probably wouldn't do it with so many different hi-hats, but um, since I was trying to replicate this remix by um, Moderat eating hooks, um, I kind of tried to get close to the original sound. And that's why I used um, several instances and layers in the sound design process. 
Well, let's take a look at the claps here. We have um, sort of we have three claps, and you also see they're moved around in the track delay here to fit nicely in the groove. So I'm starting with the first one. And snare clap in that case, you see it's carved out in those frequencies and there's a bit of a chorus on top. And that one doesn't go well alone, so it needs to be layered somehow. So I'm taking this one here. Let's listen to this in solo mode. And um, this one is also a bit compressed and um, we also have a sidechain to catch the tail whenever there should be one. And um, we are doubling up the sound with a um, doubler that's been just created for Ableton only purposes. You could also use the waves doubler or something. But um, well, basically, if you, um, if you delay left and right channels a bit differently, you're basically getting a doubler effect. You can also you want to learn more about these types of things we have a mixing course on mixing techniques and this is actually also a good mixing technique so check the description if you're interested in courses or start to finish courses or even a course on harmony in depth that's a good way to start learning more about the subject also a chorus behind it and an auto filter cutting some of the lower frequencies let's actually play it It's not too much we are rolling off, we're just making sure we're not leaving any artifacts down there where you don't really listen to anyways. And um, then there's also a small chamber reverb here. And this one adds a slight bit of tail to the sound. So this is completely dry. And now we are going into a small rehearsal room or something. And on top of that, we are like a short decay time here with 800 milliseconds and dry wet of 30. But on top of that, we are adding three seconds of decay time, but very slightly. So we have a bit more tail here and a bit more air inside of this drum loop. So there's always, it's always nice to have a bit of air because um, if you play it like this, then there's silence and silence is a bit unnatural in, in a, inside of a drum groove. So a bit of hiss or air or something would be nice and it's achieved in that way here. And also um, taking off um, some resonances here. I think there's a note or is a, like a tonal sound playing too much, standing out here too much. Okay, and also we have this 808 type clap here below and we are mixing that one into it as well with a simple reverb carving out a couple of frequencies here and that's, that's it. And uh, let's put this all together. Always sounds so weird when you play these things solo, especially when it's something that was supposed to be played mixed together from the first moment. So I'm playing it all mixed together now. Okay, so it makes a lot more sense to play it like that. And let's go to this perky percussive element here. Um, what is this? So this one is also like part of those deeper tom drum things here. And we have a second one below. Let's take a quick look at that one as well. 
All right. So. Oh, that's a very important element in the groove here. Gets it moving so well. Um, if we play it without our hi-hats and without the shakers and also without the closed hi-hat here. Nice. So um, it's a percussive sound and uh, a bit of overdrive on it. And first, what we're doing here is this is probably not the most interesting sample if played solo. So it sounds like this because it's also, it sounds so pitched down, it has to be transposed down. Yeah, so it's heavily transposed down. So this is what we started with more or less. So we are going down. And now we are creating even more upper harmonics to come back with something like that. And now we are spreading that over the um, uh, stereo spectrum slightly. Move it a bit out of the center of the uh, audio. And now we are just capturing this mid-low part here. But if we put off the overdrive here, we're working with less upper harmonics to filter around later. So it has less power. And there's more edge to it with the overdrive here. And then EQ, low cut in the mids, we're actually keeping the, those lows here uh, on the side, mid side. The other one is basically the same thing, just like two or three semitones higher. And you see those are not in the most obvious MIDI positions, but then again they're also a bit moved around in the timing to make it feel more human. Okay, so in between all this stuff we have those little elements here playing. And I'm just going to copy the bunch and place it in here in the beginning so you can see what's going on. And, um, well, if you just um, sort of loop this four bar region here and we are making sure, so shakers, shakers and hi-hats and well, all that stuff. I'm closing those. We, we went through all of these. Now let's take a look at this in-between stuff here. We have this reversed clap, for example. And um, what is happening here, we also automated the left-right in our panning. And we have um, a send effect, so turn channels up, reverb, what we are sending it through. Dry wet always up 100% here. Then we also have another effect below that. This is just another clap sample with a very short delay and a very roomy reverb. So. So very short delay times here in the simple delay. Yeah, and the reverb is like one second long and it's quite open. And play it together. So the idea is in our second part, emphasize a bit on the second clap position. So. And it's also supported with this snare type sound, this one down here. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the next guy in line is this one down here. It's just a clap effect. Well, it's not really a clap. It's more like a, this bongo type thing. Um, but there's nothing else here. And then we are going on. We are reversing that thing. So it's just the reversed audio here. And it's getting this nice end with those short delay times. Very interesting sound. And also we have um, this thing here. Oh yeah, that's a very important sound. It has a bit saturation and reverb. And I think that's was off. So um, and what else? This one. So this is just uh, another sample. I took a bit out of here, or maybe this bit, it looks more like this bit, and placed it into the front and reversed it here. So, solo that, solo that one. Oh no, let's actually put them all together. And I'm just going, probably going to like take a bit more overview here, zoom out. You know, play the couple of those with the kick. The easiest way is selecting all of these guys um, and the kick. So we also have a second part where we are basically repeating everything that's happened down here. And now we're introducing one, two more things. And we have this. So we are repeating the sound from above here. It's the same sound, it's just a bit louder and differently treated. And below that we have, um, yeah, it's also one of those little bongo elements on top. This is really what makes a difference here. We have um, those little effects and they really create a nice groovy pattern and together with those shakers up here and those with those deeper tom sounds you're getting into this very organic type of feel. I'll just put it into uh, into this pack here as um, as a whole loop. And um, I think it's, uh... yes, because I'm probably going to use it more than one time and um, just put different slices of it in there. Okay, so this is our drumming part. And we are basically sticking to it all the time. Just taking off some shakers here in the break. <laughs> Yeah, let me bring down this master a bit more. So now we have a couple of vocal samples here, as I mentioned before, and like this one is, for example, doing uh, uh, reversed, reversed phases in atmospheres. And we just cut off some lower frequencies. We add in a bit of redux to create upper harmonics in this case. Well, let's start without it and then add it in to hear the difference. 
again. Just getting more upper harmonics and then we have a long um, reverb time, 4 seconds. And a bit of a delay below. I had a very short sample and so I'm, I'm looping through this sample here in the loop mode. Overdrive and EQ and yeah a bit of, of a reverb as well and now we have another reversed vocal sample here that one is just consolidated already and That's also a very nice one. It has a very nice hiss and air to it. So these are just um, creating transitions without the need for crashes or white noise in this track. I'm not adding white noise in this track because we have so so much noise on the shakers and drum elements already. So instead of using white noise here for transitions, we are using reversed vocals. Now uh, we have a fat, subby type bass here. It's actually more like a saw bass. And we're playing that one with Massive and a couple of EQs. So open up Massive. You see our pulse wave thing here is in the saw position, so we're playing a saw, a saw, and that one is not active. A bit of bright noise on top, no modulations, go not much going on here. Just a filter and um, delay, a bit of delay. And if we go to our voicing, we are playing eight voices, a bit of detuning here and also a bit of pan position movement. And um, actually this one is tweaked a little bit and can be found in the Boiler Production 2 Massive Presets pack, as well as the Squire down here. trying to build a stable chord progression here and then resolving the progression here in the second part. So nice resolving and back to the start. So if you want to learn more about harmony and chord progressions, uh, check our course on that subject. should be very interesting if you're just starting out and you sometimes have trouble coming up and sorting your chord progressions. And also, uh, we are playing plucks. Oh, we didn't look at the sound. Um, so, chorus treatment, low cut going on, and also doubler effects. And reverb, a long one, seven seconds. Just like smoothening out the thing and, and washing it out. It's too clear if we don't do that. And of course behind our reverb we are putting the sidechain to make sure those reverb tails are not sitting on top of any important drum transients. And we are also auto panning from left to right slightly with an amount of 19% here. And sometimes there's a bit of level adjustment with this utility here to 
leave this control free for the mixing stages. And I think this frequency shifter is not doing a lot here, so don't really need that one. The source sound is a sine wave sent through filter 2 and also combined with a square wave and another, no, with a saw wave and another square wave here. So it's three oscillators playing together with this noise generator creating white noise without white noise. So that's necessary and then we are running everything through filter low pass 2 and um, the other treatments it's just really we're just pushing out those waves here and the rest of the treatment is done on the chain here but i also made a copy of that chain and put it into like massive as well and now you have this reverb and voicing and eqing inside of the patch already and you can just use it like that. It's also part of the Euler Production 2 pack. And um, now we can go take a look at those plucks or lead sounds down here. So super long reverb, what are we actually playing here? We are playing um, like this type of uh, saw 2 wave here, um, sync wave from those hard sync analog electric wave tables and drive 1, so also from the analog electric and um, a bit of modulation, a bit of a filter ring with a low pass and a bit of a tube. That one really makes it stand out here. Not much more than that. And also down here we have this tonal effect we saw in the beginning of this video where we are just playing, or did we actually take a look at those notes? Let's quickly take a look at those notes here. So this is what we are playing here. And um, so just playing A4 here. And then we are automating uh, the gain on a utility here throughout the track. It's always moving back and forth. It's also side chained, long reverb time, cutting off the lows. Make sure it's not too disturbing. We are moving from left to right with an auto pan as well. And the cutoff slightly a bit less open, it's not that noticeable though, and it's also replicated here. Yeah, it's also replicated down here in this um, tonal two patch. I think now we are through those um, all those elements and. Um, now just arranged very simply here in this in this basic arrangement we are starting with our drums like this and then we are introducing more and more elements and then we are breaking and then we are doing more or less the same thing again and then we're reaching the end of the track and on our master channel now there's um, there's actually a mastering chain available here and um, well if we quickly come pair that chain with just a with just playing a limiter and um, let's just uh, put this limiter on it's 
compare the chain now. Now it sort of glues everything together a bit. We are catching a couple of peaks with the glue compressor first. And then there's a bit of cleaning going on with the EQ, some low mids. And um, then we are working with our multi-band dynamics. Oh, notice how the um, one of those hi-hats is standing out if we are taking those off. So we are compressing the high frequencies band here quite a bit. And then we are adding a bit of punch with a shorter release time and a bit of sustain with a longer release time. No makeup gains here. So we are losing amplitude. And then final touches EQ focusing a bit on kick and hi-hats and we are limiting in the end. Well, the limiting is still quite subtle, so not too much going on here. And that's, and that's basically an approach to make a track like Moderate Eating Hooks with this remix by Siri Osmo, or I think that's his name. And um, well, it's a great track, it's it's an awesome style. What what a nice groove pattern this is, and it was really fun redoing this. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Check the description for sounds, presets, samples, and courses, because this YouTube channel here is like supported by our website. Subscribe to our channel, and I hope to see you next time.